Hello, I'm so happy I got a hold of you. Welcome back to another exciting episode of Lucia's Showcase. I am Lucia's T. Hey, welcome back to the backlog. This week, we're taking a look at a game that's almost a decade old, but my cat, come on, cop. Limbo came out in a time when I was crazily invested in the download-only indie scene. I don't know why I avoided this game. Maybe it's because it was black and white. Oh man, I hope this means I get a cameo. You don't. Oh. Or that the story was vague. I don't know. I just, I didn't play it, but the game kept popping up. And never more so than when Inside was announced from the makers of Limbo. So finally, my curiosity was piqued. I have to check out this game. I have it free on PS Plus, and I have the physical release dual pack of Inside and Limbo. What did I miss? Limbo just reeks of early Xbox 360 download game. I know that's a random statement, but it feels and looks like Puddle or I'm Alive or various other indie games I've played. You are dropped into the fray with no story or explanation and must walk to the right. Pretty quickly, you will realize everything is out to kill you. Bear traps, long falls, spiders, you're very fragile. You quickly learn you can push and pull objects and set bear traps, allowing you to clear them and other obstacles, which gives a satisfying aha moment, which this game is full of. That's also the only thing this game is about. Need to cross the body of water? Drag a body and hop over it. Need to avoid gunfire? Block it, or have another gun destroy it. You have two moves, jump and object drag. You can also activate switches. Everything in the game can be accomplished using these tools and common sense. It makes for a short and quaint experience, but once that is over, it will be quickly forgotten. This brings me to my next thought. Why is this game so heralded and lauded? It has funny death animations and a nice difficulty curve of anti-gravity, electricity, and other unique gameplay elements. The brain maggots that force you to move one way are particularly cool, but once again, very little traditional gamer skill is needed to finish. Checkpoints are generous and boss fights non-existent. This game instead draws people in with its mythos, or lack thereof. The game is called Limbo. And it's black and white, so we are assuming you're in limbo. The place you go when you're dead between heaven and earth. Sometimes called purgatory. You are searching for your sister, whom is either dead as well, or grieving you. Once the game finishes, it seems to loop back to the beginning. So what is this? An endless loop of limbo until you die in it and then finally go to hell? Who knows? And for me, who cares? I play games to overcome adversity, not interpret it. But I digress. Sadly, I can see the tools of a lot of today's modern walking simulator craze in the artistry of this game, which doesn't tarnish Limbo at all, but it is food for thought. Then again, Braid was like this too and came out years before, so I digress again. Time for some Lucius metrics. Series fatigue. What series? If anything, this game was breaking new ground in ephemeral storytelling. The game on face value is get to the end. All meaning must be gleaned through interpretation and speculation, which I did not enjoy the game enough to get excited by. Time sensitivity. It's aging. I wouldn't wait on playing this too much longer. There are far more intriguing games out there now that do the same thing better. I'm guessing Inside would be chief among them. Controls. Adequate. You move and jump, push and pull. Not much else to see here. It works. Replay. Minimal. Other than trying to beat the game with no deaths, I can't see another reason to play this again. No catchy tunes or super memorable encounters to make me relive this again. Storytelling. User driven. The story is what you make of it. It can be a crazy deep allegory for living past one's due date and coping with your mortality, or a silly black and white puzzle platformer with amusing deaths. The choice is yours, though I am judging you. Difficulty to beat. Minor. There's a few challenging sections, but still, easy to beat in a single sitting. Limbo is an interesting and thought-provoking indie title and very much lived up to the reputation I had heard about. Now, while I may not be a big fan of said storytelling devices, I can't deny some are. And the game's look and feel perfectly match what they were going for. Just don't go into it expecting to be entertained. Taking all that into account from the perspective of a binge-playing game finisher, I give this my Lucius T. recommendation of... Beat it! And there you have it! That's it for this week, guys. Thank you for joining me. I know, a beat it. A little surprising when you consider how harsh I was on this game. The best way I'd equate it is like a book or boring essay you had to read in school. It's important to know what this game is like to understand today's gaming scene. And it's so short, you might as well beat it. 
All right, guys. Well, let me know what you thought of Limbo. Let me know if you think I should play inside. And as a reminder, I release a new video every Tuesday. Once again, it's been so nice getting a hold of you. Take care.